Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of Let's Talk Jonesboro. Today we're here with Barbara Jimenez and she is the Executive Director of the Delta Symphony Orchestra. Hello Barbara, thank you for joining us on Let's Talk. Hi Bill, thanks for having us. Me? We, <laughs> <laughs> well, you are uh, uh, in a new position. How yes. long have you been with the orchestra? A little over six months. Six months. Mm -hmm. Well, that's about how long I've been with the city of Jonesboro. So we're both newbies. We're newbies, and we're getting we're getting familiar with with our our jobs and our and, mm -hmm. and all that's around it. Tell me what you have learned about uh, the Delta Symphony Orchestra that that maybe you didn't know before you got involved with it. Certainly, uh, the orchestra members uh, are come from a great variety of states in the surrounding area from. Tennessee, Georgia, Mississippi, Missouri, not to mention many from the Arkansas area. So it's not just a local orchestra. Yes, we're in the heart of Jonesboro, but we pull in, are fortunate to have many musicians who travel far just to play with our orchestra. So we're fortunate in that matter. And this is not uh, some podunk orchestra. This I don't is, think so. <laughs> this is a perfect, I've watched some of the videos of, of of this group's performances. This is a first-class orchestra. Well, thank you. We appreciate that. We are the only professional orchestra in Northeast Arkansas. Is that right? Yes, it was uh, Neil Barty who, uh, he and his wife Elaine uh, originated the orchestra in 1975 when they were part of the Foundation of Arts here in Jonesboro. And in 2000, And the orchestra was originated by uh, Neil to employ the musicians in the area so they could make regular money. And that's how it started out in 1975. It's been going strong and we're growing quite fast actually. We have a wonderful group of board members, uh, 16 voting board members. And um, it's been going really hard and strong, especially since I stepped in and started pushing a little bit. <laughs> And, and you came in to push, uh, to, 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 build, to build it, uh, it's, it's not uh, musically, although you have a musical background. Yep, I was born into a musical family. I was raised here in Jonesboro, and um, I've traveled a lot as a professional musician. And when I came back here in 2012, I, was, I love Jonesboro, but this position in particular gives me the opportunity to help others to find their gifts, find a way to share their gifts and help others. Because as a nonprofit, we're, we don't in, just entertain. We educate and we enrich all of the lives in the Delta region. And now the, the big event that's coming up is the gala. Absolutely. It's our biggest fundraiser of the year. It will be on September 10, which is a Saturday night at 6 p.m. At the Fowler Center, which is on the Arkansas State University campus here in Jonesboro, and I've heard wonderful things about the Fowler Center. It's it's a good place to have an orchestra. In my opinion, in my Lily opinion, it's one of the finest halls in Arkansas to play. We have had a now the Delta Symphony is not associated with Arkansas State, Arkansas State University, but. The Fowler Center collaborates with us so we can have our concerts there. We have uh, three a year there. And the acoustics, the design of it is absolutely premier. In fact, I know that a lot of national and international acts that go into the Fowler Center, while they're on stage performing, in between numbers, they'll stop and they'll comment on how wonderful the hall is. That says a lot for Jonesboro. It does. So many wonderful facilities at ASU and, and mm -hmm. the Fowler Center is, is just another jewel. And the DSO is so fortunate to be able to play there. It, just, it sounds wonderful. I've been on stage performing with them. It's absolutely amazing, the sound there. Tell me, uh, now, we know we have uh, the regular supporters uh, of the DSO, and, uh, but, but if you were trying to grow an audience, which I assume is part of your... Uh, no, not at all. Of course. <laughs> Of course, yeah. yes. So yes. if I have not been to a performance of the Delta Symphony Orchestra, mm -hmm. what, uh, what am I missing? Music in people's lives is similar to like an abstract. You can't touch it. You can only hear it and feel it, right? Mm -hmm. And when you engage your children, your family, 
in events like going to an orchestra, it puts them on a the right track for skills they might not otherwise get in life. Like we like to encourage in the education to have your children in music early. It keeps them, uh, it's, the statistics prove that when children are in a music program that they do better on SATs, they're less likely to get involved in drugs, uh, they do better in life, they become professionals. They, so early education at New Music is great. And if you start your child early going to orchestras, it exposes them to that. It exposes them to the wide range of music that we have from classical to pop to the different um, sounds of the instruments and in the future we're hoping to integrate a new program where uh, you can bring your children into a rehearsal to go on stage with the members of the orchestra and actually let the kids interact and touch the instruments and ask the musicians uh, questions but having the symphony is also a great way to enjoy history enjoy the fabulous emotion that goes with it. It's just a positive experience all the way around. And it's great for the city. Great for the city. It is great for the city. It's just one more way that, that uh, Jonesboro is, is rich, I think. Yes. We're fortunate that we're good uh, visual ambassadors for the city of Jonesboro. For instance, in May uh, of this year, uh, we will have the 27th annual Young Artist concert which uses one or two of our grand prize winners from the uh, competition held a month earlier and families from all over the u.s travel here for that competition to vie for grand prizes and money and uh, these kids play with our orchestra on the last concert it's packed out they are backed by the delta symphony orchestra children's chorus and that, is, um, that was an, an idea originated by Robin Yates, a fine educator from the Jonesboro Public Schools here in Jonesboro. She wanted to have an or, um, opportunity to get all the kids from across the Delta region that are in elementary and junior high and have them sing, have an opportunity to be on stage and experience symphonic music. We do that at this concert. And we have up to 200 of those voices backing the symphony and our grand prize winners. That's fabulous. It's really cool. Yeah, that it is. That is cool. So you have, and you're talking about the impact on, on families and children and, mm -hmm. and, and what music can mean in, in a child's life, but you have a children's chorus. Yeah, too. What, we do. What does that mean and what do they do? Okay. Um, for example, Elaine Barty, our conductor's wife, who is also another fine educator from this area, in our last concert, she met with uh, several schools throughout the area weekly to work certain chorus numbers and then they all came together for the final rehearsals to appear and sing behind the orchestra and i will tell you at the last concert it was really great um, at the end here we have a full stage of children 200 voices of children the delta symphony orchestra the grand prize winners singing and playing, and we end the concert with um, the Star Spangled Banner. I was in the wings, and I peeped out. We had the teachers from all of the schools that participated on stage with us. Everyone stood up. It was just goosebumps. It was chills. It was wonderful. A very patriotic moment, which I'd like to see more of. Now, tell me about uh, where we go to find tickets? How Good we question. Tickets? Uh, we have a new website. It is deltasymphonyorchestra.org. You can go there to our ticket page and order there. You can order online through PayPal, which is uh, secure. You can also mail in for tickets and you can also call in. So let me give you that information really quick. Okay. I've given you the website. Our office number is 870-761-8254. Our mailing address is P.O. Box 19117, Jonesboro, Arkansas 72403. And after all that, if you still have questions, please just call in and one of our staff will be glad to guide you the tickets. Our ticket prices this year, our general admission is $15 for adults. For seniors 55 and over, it's $10. We have student prices, uh, grades 1 through 12, for $5.
And also this year, uh, we have introduced a wonderful thing where we want to honor the veterans in our country, whether active or retired. Uh, they get in free to listen to the wonderful music that we can offer. And we have season tickets packages that you can buy this year. Uh, the season ticket holders get a little extra. Uh, for a $55 ticket, it allows you uh, not only all of the concerts here in Jonesboro and the one in Batesville, but it also gives you discounts to special fundraisers we hold through the year. Uh, there's, you get reserved seating, uh, no line at the box office. Um, you get to come to some orchestra rehearsals, and after the concerts, you also to get, get to meet with the guest artists that we have that come into town. And there's much more that goes with that little package, so we're excited about that to offer this year. Now, what type of guest artists do you have? Do you ha is this would be like vocalists that, that perform with, in, in, with the, the symphony? Yes, orchestra? we have vocalists, instrumentalists. Some of our past guest artists have uh, been Matt Cavanaugh, from here, but on Broadway. Uh, we have Kyle Dean Massey, also from here and on Broadway. Uh, Jenny Powers, on Broadway. These are all folks in television as well. We've had many of our, uh, again, our youth that have been involved in our contest perform. They've gone off to study at the Paris Conservatory. They've played Carnegie Hall, and we have them back. So we get a well-rounded input of styles of music with these artists that we bring back. That is incredible. And, and for those who don't know, true talent, absolute talent, and, and we, we are accustomed probably more to seeing athletic talent and appreciating that, but true talent is, is breathtaking. And, and whether it's musical, athletic, whatever, a true talent is, is something worth to behold, is it? I agree. Uh, talent is that X factor. True talent yeah. is that X factor that takes your breath away, that goose bump, that inspiration. You know as well as I do when people listen to that true talent, whomever they may be, you sometimes find answers in your life. You, 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 the emotion that comes through you is very satisfying and very healing for the soul. It's very important. Well, now, uh, you, I know you can't survive on ticket sales alone. So people who are fans of the arts and appreciate the arts and are capable, you need donors. You need corporate donors. You need, you need individual donors. What do they need to do? How can they contribute? Thank you. First, let me chat about our, our patrons that give us um, donations throughout the year to fund our basic support. Uh, their philanthropy endows us to be able to keep up with the education programs that we want to put out to the community and through the, through the business costs of running an orchestra. Uh, we're very grateful for them. We have different uh, categories that if you can donate any amount you want of wish, but we have different categories that you have, you know, if you want to donate a certain amount of money every year, we can keep that going. Uh, we have corporate sponsors. If you want to be a corporate sponsor, we also have a package to offer you for that. Uh, if you'd like to do that, contact the office. Uh, we can arrange for you to uh, sponsor a concert. Uh, at that concert, we'll be glad to have you up on stage and introduce you and your product and your corporation to our, or our community. We can display your product in our foyer during the concert. A lot of perks that go with that as well, but we would be very appreciative of any donations to help us keep moving forward. Wonderful. Well, Barbara, thank you very much. We're so proud that you came to visit with us. Barbara Jimenez from the Delta Symphony Orchestra, thank you for joining us on Let's Talk. Thank you. I enjoyed being here. Thank you, Barbara. Our next guests are with the Arkansas United Community Coalition, David Nunez and Michelle Rengel. Thank you for joining us, guys. Thank, thank you for having us. Thank you for having us. Yes. And David, you, you work out of Jonesboro, and you are the Northeast Arkansas organizer. And uh, Michelle, you are based in Rogers, correct? Yes, and our headquarters is in Springdale. And you're the field director. Yes. Well, tell me a little bit about uh, what the, the organization does. Sure. Um, organization United Community Coalition is a nonprofit 
organization that works with immigrants uh, by uh, empowering uh, our youth and our immigrants and also by uh, uh, coalition building. Um, we also work on uh, civic engagement and uh, we do have some navigation immigration services. Uh, plus we have um, different networking programs such as Family Defender and the Vote Squad. And um, so mainly, you know, we just uh, try to provide services, uh, not services, but uh, resources for the, for the immigrant community. Michelle, why is, why is that important? Um, well, we were founded after um, 2011, when actually 11 anti-immigrant bills were proposed in our state legislature. Mm. And although they weren't passed because we have some really great allies that acknowledge the contributions and the values that immigrants provide to our state, we noticed that there weren't any immigrant voices at the table. And so in empowering immigrants with these volunteer and leadership development programs, we hope to you know, increase their confidence in the knowledge of the system and also help them integrate into this um, civic process so that they can be at the table when these types of legislations are taking place in our state. And um, I mean, we also help them understand um, their, their civic duty in voting and getting others registered to vote and even in running for office. And so we hope to see more representation of the immigrant community in Arkansas as we continue growing. That's great. Uh, we know all immigrants are not uh, Hispanic. We have a Hispanic center in, in Jonesboro that we're very proud of and they're breaking ground right now on a new uh, facility. But you guys don't offer the same type of services the, it, it, that the Hispanic Center does. Can you di differentiate a little bit for us? Sure. Uh, we are, like I said, we're not service providers. We're more of uh, resources, resource providers. And my favorite part of this organization is that we work with all kinds of immigrants, not just Latinos, but we are trying to reach out to the Asian community and you know any other community that that needs you know that that um, their struggles with you know um, setting settling in and, and where they live in the community and stuff like that. So we, we're trying to reach out to any 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 community. And that's not to say that we consider ourselves representative of all the communities. We know that they have within themselves already great um, groups and organizations, and we just hope to build coalitions with them to help. Um, you know, share the knowledge that we've been able to gain through our national partnerships and even connect them to that so that they can continue to grow and serve their communities as well. The National Welcoming Week is coming up. Can yes. you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Uh, the, the, uh, the national, it's a national celebration that, that, goes, uh, that goes for about a week. And um, uh, actually here in Jonesboro, uh, uh, Mayor uh, Harold Perrins, Signed a proclamation for Welcoming Week last year, and he's he's going to do it this year as well. And what it is is, you know, we we try to make the immigrant community welcome in the city. And so for one week, we 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 come up with an event that the whole community can participate in, and and, and have fun and you know trying to enjoy the for one day just you know. Everybody get along. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I hope we can get along every day. But uh, what what type of events will happen that day? Well, uh, for us, uh, we're we're I think we're shooting. Well, I don't think <laughs> we are shooting for uh, uh, like a community meal, uh -huh. and we're we're hoping to have different um, uh, different uh, countries, you know, uh, providing their 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 food like. Their, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Cuisine. Yeah, the traditional, traditional cuisine mm -hmm. and, and share it with everybody. You know, we like to eat around here, so. Yes, we do. <laughs> yes, we do. And there's some so. fabulous uh, foods out there. If, uh, yeah. But uh, other cities, you know, bigger cities, they, they can have, uh, they have parades or they have concerts. And right. so technically, we, we just want the, the, the community to, to, to volunteer for our event you know, that we're going to have. That would be great. How could, how can people participate? How can they volunteer to provide some of these things? Uh, well, we, we need, uh, we need chefs, you know, chefs, and we need uh, uh, servers, and, and we need people that like to eat, you know, so, <laughs> so, so any, anybody that can, 
relate, you know, to, right. to cooking, uh, they're welcome. You know, any age, you know, we, anybody can help. That's great. I'm up for the eating part. <laughs> That's what I do uh, best. <laughs> <laughs> you and I are broke. Yeah. Well, now, uh, who, who do they contact? Uh, they can contact me. Um, my personal, uh, my, my office number, my cell phone is 870 uh, and uh, or they can email me at any organizer at ArkansasCoalition.org, um, or they can call the, the hotline at 479-763-AUCC. Very good, very good. They can also find us on Facebook, uh, Arkansas, Coalition, uh, Arkansas United Community Coalition, and uh, you find, find the page and hit like, and you can follow, follow us on all the events that we do and uh, on Twitter too, Twitter, uh, AUCC underscore Arkansas. Very good, very good. Uh, Michelle, how many uh, other places in Arkansas have services like this? Well, we're very fortunate. Um, for the first two years that AUCC was operating, we were totally grassroots. Uh, we were working from home and from our cars and getting meetings in coffee shops and libraries and wherever we could. And uh, we have been fortunate across our coalition building across the state that we have seven immigrant resource centers, um, either in churches, with other community organizations such as ours, nonprofits, and our headquarters in Springdale is in the very heart of Springdale. And um, that one was, um, is provided in partnership with our um, Catholic Charities partners that help us with our navigation work. Um, so we have locations in Springdale, Fort Smith, DeQueen, Jonesboro, uh, McGee, Monticello, and Little Rock. Very nice, very nice. And so the Jonesboro one has been around for how long? We opened our, our Jonesboro office uh, on June 11th, and uh, we're located at 911 Magnolia Road, inside the Magnolia Road Baptist Church. When you are helping people navigate through the various paperwork, and you know, People don't understand mm -hmm. all the paperwork that's required when you are working your way towards citizenship. Mm -hmm. uh, it's monumental, it's incredibly expensive, and uh, it's not understood mm -hmm. by those of us who were born with citizenship. Can you, can you tell us a little bit about that process? Mm -hmm. So, um, as we were helping with DACA, Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, in 2012. We did free workshops where we would help hundreds of people a day just come in, fill out the paperwork, and then we would have volunteer attorneys for pro bono who would look over the application, give legal counsel, and then the person would be responsible for turning in the package. However, we noticed that there were some faults in that and that we couldn't follow up with those people and find out if they actually were able to complete the process and be successful. Um, and so we have this partnership with Catholic Charities in um, a couple of specific processes, um, DACA, citizenship, and residency renewal. Um, and so our volunteer navigators become experts in these applications and help our volunteers fill them out. And then Catholic Charities has agreed to be our you know, legal counsel who reviews these applications, even signs on as legal representatives. And then from then on, Catholic Charities and us, we receive every single type of paperwork that comes back, every type of receipt that comes back from immigration throughout the process that we can get to see if they complete or not. And with citizenship, we've been able to accompany um, a couple of our clients to their um, citizenship interview to make sure that they have language access for those who are able to take it in their native language. Um, and so for those specific services, um, we've been able to provide that direct help. Whenever it comes to something more complicated, like a petition or asylum uh, or something like that, we'll have Catholic Charities take a look at it. But most of the time, we end up referring um, those cases to a private attorney. So you guys do everything from serving the, the, the basic essentials to obtaining citizenship to uh, uh, making everybody feel good and, and interacting in, in the communities that, in which they live. Yeah, and also like uh, to reiterate what she already said, it, we're also trying to hold them accountable for be, being a, a, like if they become citizens, you know, we, we make sure we encourage them to register to vote and, you know, participate in all the, the, the responsibilities that they have to, that they have as a citizens. To understand you know. their responsibilities right. as well as their rights. Right, right. Yeah. And, and we provide, you know, 
whatever we have resources about that. What else does the AUCC provide or do that, that we haven't talked about? Well, our, uh, I guess one of the grassroots is, is the change agent program. It's, the, it's where, where I came in as a, as a change agent. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's the empowering program that, that allows uh, our youth to, you know, to kind of get out of the shell and become you know, a little bit more uh, proactive and, and a little bit more, um, I guess, what's the word I'm looking for? Feel good about yourself and, and you yeah. know, get out there, organize events and stuff like that. And that is a that is a uh, that is a uh, a year long program, and um, uh, but, but you know we have the training and uh, what am I missing? <laughs> uh, so it's a nine month program, and and and, and it's basically like uh, we go to training and then we uh, organize a, a community event. Um, uh, with we we have community surveys that. Um, will give us ideas to what kind of community event we need to have, uh, whether it's education or 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 any any type of issue that the community is struggling with. Um, we make that happen. You know, it's 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 uh, you raise that a good question there because we often hear uh, debate and and uh, talk about. The, the concerns about immigrants, immigrants or immigration from citizens. What are the what are the fears and concerns uh, that you hear from immigrants? For the most part, uh, around the Northeast area, uh, I haven't heard much of uh, hostility or anything like that. Uh, every every everybody pretty much uh, has been treated fairly. You know at the the um, uh, we don't see a whole lot of um, uh, racism and stuff like that. We you hardly see it. You know, yes. most most immigrants around here they, they they like to go to work. They like to come home. They like to be with their families and stuff like that. And for that, you know, it, that is being respected. And you know, I think we're working pretty good about that. Good. I think um, what differentiates us as an organization is that we are an advocacy group. And so our Change Agents program is really to show people that they have um, everything they need already to advocate for themselves um, and to feel empowered. And so our trainings uh, focus on, you know, what are the concepts of organizing? How do we build power to win against an injustice that is affecting our community? And these change agents, they survey the community to find out, you know, what injustice do you feel needs to be fixed? And then, you know, however small they find a way, a project, a forum, an event, somehow that addresses the issue so that they can help the community come together and address it together. Um, um, and then as an advocacy group on immigrant rights, we've noticed that, um, you know, a lot of people are affected in one way or another by a broken immigration system. And one of the biggest fears that we have is being separated from our families because of a small um, infraction um, in the justice system. And whenever that happens, you know, um, people who have constructed lives here for, for decades now, um, you know, their children are citizens and, um, they're going off to college, you know, that's what our parents came here to do is to give us a better life and a chance at this education that this country provides and to know that our families can be taken away because of something that, you know, can be addressed but hasn't because of, you know, politics right. is very frustrating. And I think that's one of our biggest fears and one of the biggest goals of ours to, to be able to attribute to that change um, starting in our state. You know, Arkansas has never um, really been considered. And in my experience, when I was younger and I started with this organization, I was like, when is Arkansas going to march for immigration reform? When are our immigrant communities going to get out there and say, you know, we deserve to be here just as much, and our families don't deserve to be separated. We don't deserve to go through this pain. And AUCC has done that. We've joined national. We've brought 50 immigrants from Arkansas to over four actions already in Washington, D.C., in Louisiana, on the steps of the Supreme Court, you know, asking for, for fair treatment and non-separation non of our families and, you know, for there to be a solution. We've talked to, I mean, we've gotten to be in our representatives' offices. I have never felt so um, empowered before to be able to, you know, 
ask my representative, like, please don't separate my family. You know, take us into consideration as your constituent, you know. And I don't think that people knew that before that they could do that as much as they do now with the help of AUCC. Right. That's well said, and I think we've proved through, proved through history that we're always better when we embrace our commonalities. And uh, I, I, I thank you guys for being with us today. Thank you for having us. Uh, That's why I brought her here, because she knows how to talk. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys are great. David Nunez, uh, Michelle Rangel, very, very nice to have you guys with us.